the continuation of the class. We are going to have a wonderful class today. It's a very interesting topic. Is it drinking wine a sin? Can it become a sin? On one hand, we see there is a mitzvah to drink wine. Kiddush, Shabbat, Yom Tov, holidays, celebration. How the Torah treat this topic? What can get wrong if it's permitted on Purim? I hear often, you know, on Purim, eh, just drink as much as you want. You know what? Not only permitted, it's mandatory. You must get drunk. True or, bad, or, or not true. What's the limit? Sometimes you're so enthusiastic to do mitzvah, it turns out as a sin. So, what's the rules? Where's the limit? How much? When? Which occasions? With whom? We'll answer that today with more surprising things. We are on the book of the gates, uh, I'm sorry, we are on the book of Orchot Tzadikim, the ways of the Tzadikim. It's the gate of joy. In the middle of this topic, Shaba <coughs> Mevakesha, uh, please. Drinking wine, however, is very good when it is done properly in the manner of wise, of the wise. As uh, King Shlomo wrote, Mishle 31, 6 through 7. Give strong drink to him who is in despair and wine to the bitter in soul. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his toil no more. It is further said of wine, Shoftim 9, 13. That it gladdens Hashem and man. Mm-hmm. The Tehillim 10415 and wine makes glad the heart of man. It is also written, Shir Hashirim 1 2, for your love is better than wine, and Ibit 710, and your palate is as the best wine. All of these teaches us that the benefits of wine when it is when it is drunk in moderation, in the manner of the wise, in which case the mind rules over the oh, wine. That's, that's the rule. And that's not the, rule. the wine over the mind. Right. So everyone know their limits. If I drink a half a cup of wine, to me it's enough. For some people, if they drink the whole cup is enough. <clears throat> For some people, if they drink half of it, they lose their mind. They become drunk. So I can't tell you, and the Torah cannot tell you, the limit is one cup. What size? What's your weight? A man? A woman? 15 years old? It's against the law. But what if he drinks in Kiddush? He's obligated on Purim from 13 years old. So you know your limit. If you don't know, take it slowly, by slow, slow, step by step, slowly, and drink a little bit, and then see how you handle it. Now, why to even drink in the begin with? There's a mitzvah to drink wine. Even the Rambam, the greatest doctor ever, said that drinking wine before eating, it's very good for you, it's very healthy. He opens the stomach, the veins, expanding, and your stomach is ready to receive food. A little bit. I'm not talking about drinking uh, vodka and whiskey. There are some people for them is a mitzvah to pursue after vodka and whiskey. Every every celebration you see them always by the bar. Where are they by the bar? No, today is a mitzvah. They'll find that which it's, it's, it's justification from the Torah. The Allah, today is a mitzvah to drink. You want to drink? Drink a little bit. People flag you as uh, someone that uh, is always by the bar. That's not good on your resume. <laughs> Drink a little bit, give you a nice and good feeling, and you fulfill the mitzvah, that's it. It's a mitzvah to be happy. It's a mitzvah to be happy every day. You want to drink every day? You know your limit is a half a glass of wine? Do it before you go to sleep. You want to do foolish things? You drink, you go to sleep, bye. Please read the next part. 
who drink at the set time with friends and acquaintances and with the saintly and the righteous, and not with boars and uh, empty-headed people. So, when you already drink, you should choose your company wisely and carefully. Because if you drink with righteous tzaddikim and chassidim, most likely, there's going to be words of Torah, it's going to be nice talking there, you, can, you won't hear the S word or the, the F word or the N word or whatever. But if you drink with all these light-headed people, the stupid and, and, and the, the lawbreakers or whatever you want to call them, you know what's the result? What can come out of it? What good can come from uh, uh, out of this group of people? You know, not sure. People will tag you according to your company. Tell me who your friends. I'll tell you who you are. Always you want to be around the scholars. People that can influence you and watch you so you won't fall. In the other company, they'll make sure you fall. Drink, drink today, celebration. More and more and more for the sake of stupidity. What are you trying to get out of it? So, you want to drink alone with a measure? Fine. If you drink in celebration, choose the right table to be with. Always. When you drink and when you don't drink. And especially when you drink. If anyone will watch you, is them. And you see that they themselves, they don't drink much. So you won't be encouraged to drink. Sometimes there's a mitzvah to drink. Let me give you another Allah. Every Shabbat, every time you do a Kiddush, when the head of the household says, he drinks, and then he gives to everyone a sip. Halachically, they don't have to. By listening to the mitzvah, to the barachah, the blessing, they fulfill the mitzvah. Why they sip from the wine? It's called the Hibuv Mitzvah to show Hashem that we found his mitzvah. We like his mitzvot. In a case you want to drink wine during the meal, by taking these sips, a little amount of wine, you don't have to say extra beracha. But if you didn't drink after the Kiddush, and there's a wine on the table, they're bringing wine on the table, then you have to say, Okay? You'll be exempt only if you drink. So this is why another, you know, another reason why we're giving everyone the opportunity to participate in such a mitzvah. Just so you know, you don't have to. If you didn't get wine, don't get upset. It's not mandatory halakhically. Right. <clears throat> For wine will increase the wisdom of the deep. It is a tree of life for those who keep the law. Wine increases the wisdom of the wise. The folly of the fool, it multiplies. The lovers love it renews. It renews. It stirs and the hatred of the foe. It makes giver impart more and closes the miser, miser's heart more. Okay, so you see the Torah does not ignore from the good benefits that can come out of drinking a little bit of wine. It's good blessings. Sometimes there's Hatov the Hameti during the meal. They're bringing more wine to the table, an extra blessing during Shabbat and Yom Tov, which you need to reach up to 100 blessings every day. You're saying, Beracha, Hatov the Hameti. Some people ignore from this Allah, I don't know why. It says that for wine will increase the wisdom of the deep. Sometimes you're troubled. You went through a long day and troubles. You can focus. Sometimes a half of a cup, a little wine, it put you in focus. You relax. You can, you you control again your mind, and you can do a lot of great things. So wine can be very good, but with measurement, with midah, as long as it's under control, great things can come out of it. The Talmud says, I want to share with you something very interesting. That in, it is in the tracted. Sanhedrin Kuf Gimel, which is 103, 2. It says the following Gidola Legima. Great is the sitting together and drinking and, and, and eating a little bit in company. It says Gidola Legima. 
שמקרבת את הלבבות, it brings the hearts close. מרחקת את הקרובים, but sometimes can distance those who are close to you. מקרבת את הרחוקים, and bring close those who are far away from you. And sometimes bad things can come. I'm going to give you some few examples. The Talmud teaches us that when we sit together and there's food on the table, and there's some drinks, it makes our feels close. This is why for Jews to drink wine with non-Jew, well, that's the issue, so we won't get intermarriage. But everybody knows that, right? Almost, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or not Jew. People want to do business, they invite the one who want to do business with to lunch or dinner, because they know food brings people close. Who they learn it from? Learn from Tanakh, from, from the Talmud. It closes the deal. It's an ancient thing, it's an old thing, everybody knows. First, let's eat and drink. We are now together, we sit on the same table, we ate together, the hearts are open. After the meal, we'll talk business. Never ever speak business, talk business before you eat. It's a good advice for, to nail a deal. We'll talk later. So eat, drink, boom. You increases the percentage to close a deal tremendously. Something can be the opposite. A little lack of it can be opposite. I'll give you an example. What is the meaning of when the Talmud says that the, the sitting together or wine or, or eating together fruit are, can, be, can distance those who are close to you? If you read Tanakh, the book of Genesis, it's a well-known story. Two very famous figures. One name is Abraham. Abraham. His nephew Lot. Lot was with Abraham for many, many years. Abraham took care of him, took care of him, he took him under his wings. He taught him a lot. Lot become rich and famous thanks to Abraham. Lot was even saved by two non unhuman, not human people, angels, for the sake of Abraham. Should Lot be thankful to Abraham? Absolutely. The descendants of Lot should be friends with the descendants of Abraham? Absolutely. That's the basic of being grateful. It's the basic. Lot coming out of Sodom, intimately with his two daughters, two nations come out of it. Moab and Aramon. What we can do, we are related to them, they're related to us. Fine. It's a fact. Amon and Moab related to the Jewish people. Just a reminder, that the Mashiach, the Mashiach will come from Moab. Who is the grandma of David and Melech, King David? Ruth. Ruth came from Moab. But the Torah, it's a commitment from God. Hashem said that in His Torah, marked forever, a bad decree against Amos of Amon of Moab. What happened? Hashem said, Lo yavo amoni umoavi bikahal Hashem. You should never ever marry with Amun and Moav. The men are not allowed to take women from the Jewish people. The women of Amun and Moav are different. It's permitted. Why for another discussion? What happened? What happened? They didn't go through their land. Why, 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 why such a bad decree? What did they do? They were grateful. So many years later, the people of Israel, you know, it was Avraham Avinu days, Abadu Moab became a great nation. The people of Israel go to Egypt, living after 100, 110 years, millions of people. They're doing their way to Eretz Israel. 
after 40 years in the desert, studying Torah, accepting the Torah, becoming the children of God, covenant.